Good evening. Welcome to Old Taste and Sea Cooking Show. My name is Keisha Jones, and this is Pastor Jura Kiner, our co-host for tonight. Bless you. We are introducing a great, awesome meal, but I will let Pastor Kiner go ahead and introduce what he's doing on tonight. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm just happy to be here with you. Uh, Black History Month, my birthday month. They often say the kings are born in February, and the queens are born in February. This is the age of the Aquarius, even though I'm not a horoscope person, but I do know the age of the Aquarius. <laughs> so thank God for you all tuning in. We want to share a little black history. Do you not know that this is the first talk show, cooking show, created for Christians, by Christians, for us, by us, in the country? Started right here in Memphis, Tennessee. God gave me this vision in 2010 to be a blessing because when I grew up, a lot of the preachers were overweight, massively uh, dying early, heart attacks. So God put it in my heart to make sure that not only we're fasting, but cooking right, eating right. And it's a trend that's growing greatly. I'm happy to see the effects. I'm overwhelmed to receive the emails, the phone calls, the responses, people calling, uh, telling us we're doing a great job, asking for the recipes, seeing us out in the streets. We have four TV shows. We have um, one of the most TV shows of any church that I know of in the country. But God, this talk show gets more response than any of our TV shows. My preaching show doesn't get the response that the cooking show does. So that lets me know we're having a major impact because people may not like the way I preach, but they love to eat. So this show is for the people that don't like the way I preach, but they love the way I eat and they love how they eat. So this is going to be a blessing to you. This today's show is dynamic. It's a special Black History Month. Uh, dinner and dishes that we have. We're going to show you some food probably that you've never seen in your life. It's going to be dynamic. I wish you could taste it. Of course, it's all taste and see. So we'll taste and see it. Uh, our audience, our Jesus People Church family out here, let's give each other a hand. Oh my God. They are going to be tasting it. Uh, Keisha asked me earlier today, she said, how many people do you want me to prepare for? Just 10? And we got over 10 here right now. I said, at least 20 because I can eat the leftovers. This is how good this dish is. So we're going to let Keisha start off with the introduction of our Black History dish, our February dish for Black History Month. Watch this. It's going to blow your mind. Praise God. First of all, we're going to start off with the soup for t tonight. And of course, it's Pastor's favorite black um, beans. Black bean that soup. Is cream of black beans. Cream of black bean soup. So we're going to dedicate the cream of black bean soup. Each dish, we're going to dedicate to somebody. So this dish, we're going to dedicate to most definitely my man Malcolm X. Malcolm X, love dark food. He loved wheat food. He got that from Elijah Muhammad. They never ate anything that was white. All of their rice had to be brown rice. The grains. This was before it became popular. This was before they had the wheat bread in the stores. This was back in the 50s and 60s. So Elijah Muhammad was way ahead of his time. Nobody in the country, no black man, no white man, no Korean, no Mexican, no Asian, no one in the country was talking about brown rice and brown bread other than Elijah Muhammad. So this is a great history lesson to let you know that your people, our culture, was way ahead of its time in eating right and being nutritionally sound. And this dish, oh my God, the black bean, as Keisha said, it's my favorite bean because it is potent in nutrients, it is potent in proteins, it is potent in vitamins. So I need something for my body. When I'm preaching, I need things to help me preach with the power in the anointing. I don't need things to hinder my speed and my flow in which I'm operating. So Keisha, what all do we have in this Malcolm X black bean soup? Well, we have cream of mushroom fat free. Fat free uh, cream of mushroom. And we have also green onions. Green onions. Yellow sweet onions. Yellow sweet onions. We have sea salt. Sea salt. And we also have cumin Seasoning oh my as well. God. And a little chili powder. Oh my God. Garlic is sauteed before we start, you know. And I see some chips on the side. Yeah, and some cheese. Oh my God, let's taste this. And cheese. I see a little cheese. slice. Cheese. Cheese. Or either you can use the ricotta cheese if you want to, just a little. And just a little dab. Again, it's not too much of anything, but it's the right amount of everything. So it's oh just. Oh my a God. Let me taste this. This cheese. It looks good, but we're here for old taste and see. Mmm. <laughs> Oh my God. 
it is much better. When I grew up in Orange Mound, the only kind of beans we had wasn't even beans too much. It was a black eyed peas and purple hull peas that we had to sit on the front porch in, in what they call shell the peas. <laughs> Big Mama and they them made us stand out there doing the Jerry Lauder show and shell some purple hull peas and they were disgusting. This is real deal. This is royalty food. The black beans. Oh my God. Cook it up. This is what we need. Done. You outside serving the people because they want to eat this as well. This is right on time. The taste is so smooth, Keisha. That's why you call it cream. Mm -hmm. Cream, black bean, cream. It's not the strong, overwhelming taste that, again, the purple hull peas and the black eyed peas, so strong, so uh, assertive in your taste book and hard to digest. But these beans are easy to digest in your system. You don't have to take Melanta out the oven. You don't have to take pepto small. It's just gonna digest in your body and it's gonna work with the chemistry of your body. Keisha, this is delicious. Oh my God. All right, and next we have our salad, which it is a Greek salad. Greek salad? And what I add is our dry cherries, uh, dry cranberries, we have red onion. We also have a little squeeze of lemon, zest mm -hmm. to it. And uh, cucumbers as well. We're gonna add some cucumbers to the salad. Oh my God. And mm -hmm. toss it just a little bit. I already made my own special vinaigrette. It's a white Islamic vinaigrette. Um, and with that, all you're getting is a Islamic vinegar that's white. And then you get you the extra um, virgin olive oil and then you put a little sea salt in it, a little lemon zest to it, some basil in it, and honey, most of all, to give it that little sweetness and shake it up real good. And then here you go. Now I have feta cheese in this as well. Oh my God. And, and I love the colors of it. So again, we just had the Malcolm X black bean soup. So because of the green and the green vegetables, uh, the green coming from the ground, the salad. It's let's, kale. Let's name this. Let's name this after uh, a scientist that did a lot from developing crops from the ground. How about George Washington Carver? <laughs> so this will be our George Washington Carver Greek kale salad. And I love I love, I love, you said the dried cranberries? Uh-huh, and cherry. I love the, oh my God, dried cranberries and cherries. Cherry. So in honor of George Washington Carver, the man who made the peanut grape, the sorbet right now, people stop drinking regular milk or animal milk, and now they're on sorbet milk. Who created the sorbet milk? Again, it was George Washington Carver, one of the greatest mind scientists, inventors you can ever think of. This man did so many wonderful things that we're now eating now. All these people that are going vegan, well, they can thank George Washington Carver for that because George Washington Carver was vegan, making vegan food before the term became popular. So again, this George Washington Carver kale salad, Oh my God, delicious, and it's potent, it's powerful. The cheese is right on time, the onions right on time, the dessert is right on time. This is exactly what I need for this. You all are going to love this. Keisha, I am really with this. This is exactly what I need. This George Washington Carver kale salad. Minister Jennings, talk to us about this. Talk to us about your, your soup and then your salad. Talk to us about this. It's really delicious, Keisha. It's gone, matter of fact. Sometimes it's hard to season like a bean soup. It's not overpowering, it's not super salty. It's like, it's perfect, it's just right. You can eat it as a soup, you can even eat it as a dip. It's, oh my God, I didn't so, think about that. Yes, mm. you can eat it as a dip, so putting the, the chips in there was a really, really awesome edge. Um, it gave to the black bean soup and the kale salad. What can I say? I'm a fan of dry fruit in my salads. The um, dressing is light and healthy at the same time, and it has a great taste. Overall flavor is wonderful, so I, I'm really enjoying it. Angela, what do you say about this? Angela, your bowl is empty as well. Yeah, it, it, I see this. It was delicious. I mean, you wouldn't have never thought of eating black meat. As you stated before, coming up here like black eyed peas. Black eyed peas. Green beans. Green beans. More than beans, but Never a black bean. Mm -hmm. It's the Malcolm X black bean. And it was delicious. And um, the salad is great. It's sweet and the feta cheese balances out. It's like the sweetness. 
and you I get like the that. tartness. So it's, it is very good. You still get your vegetables and your fruit with the dried cranberry. I love that. That's the point. Mm -hmm. Hood chick, stand with us and let's discuss this tonight. What did you get so far from the cream black beans, Black Mex black beans, and then the George Washington Carver kale salad? Okay, so we'll start with the, uh, the dip. The dip was actually awesome. Uh, I can eat that just by a <laughs> snack for breakfast. Oh my and God. Black beans is actually awesome. I'm really delicate on my stomach about what I put in, put on my stomach. So this is one of those dishes that I can eat. So I do appreciate that. So the salad is always awesome because I'm a salad eater. So it doesn't matter what you put in, I'm going to eat it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wanda, talk to us. What are you getting? Yours is going as well. We've yeah. never had an audience that is eating this much beans <laughs> since Adam's not here. So this is why beans are hot tonight. I absolutely love it. I'm a soup and salad lady and delicious. Totally delicious. What stands out about it? Um, I love the salad. It's sweet and oh it's, my God. It's, it's not real sweet. Healthy it's, sweet. Yeah, it's a healthy sweet and it's really good. It's tasty. It's crunchy and it's just delicious. Oh my God. I'm Keisha. I'm ready for the next meal. I'm ready for the next dish. Okay. Oh, I'm falling over the food. <laughs> the next dish uh, is our Parmesan chicken. Um, and as well, I'm going to add some, some black rice. Oh, did you say some black rice? Yes. My special request, I told you we were going to have something that most people have never had. Not the white rice, not the brown rice, but the actual black rice. It's really made for the kings and the emperors. The kings of Africa and the empress in China, they were the only one allowed to eat it. It is called the forbidden rice. It was forbidden rice because only royalty could eat this rice. And of course, one of the first kings in Memphis to be able to eat this rice is, of course, yours truly, Pastor Kiner. So again, we have our black rice. I think we're going to name our black rice after, hmm, how about this? How about, you ready for this? You ready for this? Mansa Musa, speaking of a king, Mansa Musa is one of the kings in Africa, in Western Africa, in the kingdom of Mali. He's a matter of fact, my great, 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 was so brilliant and so smart that he had the number one library in the world in the city of Timbuktu. The only thing we as Africans knew about Timbuktu, it was so powerful. When we were growing up as little children, they didn't teach us about that in the Memphis City Schools. They didn't teach us about Timbuktu in the public education system. How did we growing up, we used to say, I'm going to knock you from here to Timbuktu. Because the slaves even spoke about Timbuktu. And the only thing that was carried on to their descendants was the fact, the name Timbuktu. One of the only names as slaves, the descendants of slaves that we remembered from Africa that we used to use at Orange Mound, Timbuktu. Nobody told us that Timbuktu was the center of learning in the world. That the Europeans would come from Europe to come to the libraries in Timbuktu to study. And Mansa Musa was so popular and intelligent that the number one trade wasn't oil like it is in America. It wasn't gold, it wasn't ivory, it was books. Books was the number one item that the Africans traded in Timbuktu. Thanks to my great, 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 Mansa Musa, know your history because this is awesome. So now let me taste the king's rice. Oh my God, Keisha. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my God. This is over the top. This is our audience. First time ever about to eat king's rice. <laughs> We're introducing this right now to the world. We want to make this forbidden rice a part of your diet. This is so awesome. The most potent protein rice in the world. There's no other grain of rice, a grain of rice, a strand of rice that can compare to the power and potency that's in the black rice. Keisha? Also, you're eating the white cream corn. I don't want to talk about the cream corn yet. Oh. This, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. 
This is over the top. Wanda, tell me about this while I eat, please. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is it. Oh my God. It's really good. I mm. thought it was going to be tough, but it's real soft. I don't know. It's not tough. <laughs> no, but it, yeah, it is delicious. Yeah. It's real soft, the s'mores, mm. and it's just, it's chewable. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. Listen, tell me about this. I'm a fan of yellow rice, but I, I think I'm changing my color tonight, Keisha. <laughs> this black rice is so awesome. It's seasoned perfectly. Mm. It's one of the things, it's not chewy, it's not grainy, and gritty. It's really, it's perfect. I can eat this by itself. It's delicious. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my God, this is over the top. My Mansa Musa black rice. Hood chick, tell me about it. Please, son, uh, come on, talk to me, please. <laughs> so I can finish eating, please. <laughs> This black rice is definitely different from the, for me. Oh my God. It's an experience for me. And from when I looked at it, so it looks like it's purple, but when I taste it, it actually, to me, has a still taste of the white. Oh my God. Rice, but it's just more healthier. So I. Oh my God. I like it. <laughs> Angela, tell me about this black rice, please. Real quickly, I didn't know black rice existed. Oh my God. <laughs> Everything on the plate is good. It's Black History Month. It's, it's a good thing. I, I got to introduce something. you to stuff that you never heard before. This is knowledge <laughs> we don't teach in college. It's right, Jesus right. People Church. Yeah, the Harvard of churches. The Harvard of churches. Right. Oh my God. I wonder. I just think you would not know this. <coughs> I want more. Before I eat anything else, I want more of this black rice. Then we have our Rosa Parks. Crusted Parmesan chicken. Why do we call it our Rosa Parks crusted Parmesan chicken? Because Rosa Parks, this is the only thing she would get up out of her seat for. With this chicken, will make Rosa Parks get up out of her seat. And I'm about to eat me a piece. Oh my God. Oh my God. In honor of Rosa Parks, this chicken will make you get up. <laughs> this chicken will make you get up out your seat. Rosa Parks crusted Parmesan chicken. Oh my God. It's a little tender. I mean, not tender. It's a little. I'm gonna, I have to use my teeth. But if you use your teeth, it's worth it. It's worth the bite. This is delicious. Dish. Oh my God. This Rosa Parks. Oh my God, Rosa Parks, in honor of Rosa Parks, this chicken will make you get up. And I'll thank you for this black rice. Oh my God, more of this. Tell us about this chicken, Keisha, how'd you make this chicken? Oh, well, of course I use a boneless, skinless chicken breast. Um, I use breadcrumbs, the Italian herb breadcrumbs. I use a little garlic powder uh, and olive oil. Most people use butter to coat their, their chicken breast, but I use the olive oil just to avoid all that fattening, cholesterol watching out for what we eat, and uh, some minced garlic, and then I use a mixture mm. of cheeses, oh Parmesan shaved cheese, mm. and put it in the oven. Oh my God. You don't have to fry it, it's oven crusted mm. Parmesan mm -hmm. chicken. And then look, we have the white corn, cream corn. Okay, which is a great blend with the black rice. Mm -hmm. Guess who we named the white corn, cream corn out of? Anybody, anybody want to know? <laughs> Martin Luther King, <laughs> black and white. <laughs> Together, the white cream corn is named after Martin Luther King. So this is Martin Luther King style, white cream corn. They're marching together. <laughs> Black and white, mix it together. It's delicious. <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna we can end the show right now and just sit back and eat because this is over the top, Keisha. Tell us about the cream corn. Well, the cream corn, I use frozen white cream corn, and I mix it with the regular frozen cream corn. Because if you, you just use the regular cream corn uh, that's frozen, it's too liquidy. So you want to mm -hmm. thicken it up with just you know your regular white corn. And uh, I use just a little honey in it, a uh, little low-fat milk, and that's it. And a little salt, and good to go. Oh, my God. How about our dessert, Keisha? Because this is over the top. Okay. This tastes like dessert. Our dinner actually is dessert. We really don't even have to have dessert. But we're going in the fridge, and we're about to get some more something sweet. 
Mm -hmm. All right, what I'm having here, holding here, is our banana cream delight dessert. And you can either do with caramel or either chocolate. Okay, so the chocolate will make this our Harriet Tugman Underground Railroad dessert. This is something that Harriet most definitely would deserve to have coming out of that Underground Railroad, okay? Let's taste this, the chocolate. And it's really light. It's not really, really sweet. It's really important. It's graham this cracker crust at the bottom of it. My favorite. This is awesome, Keisha. Mm -hmm. And just a little slice of a banana on top. What kind of cream is this? It's a fat-free whip. So, it's less than 100 calories. So, this is something that you can eat one or two of. Two or three of even, and don't feel guilty about it. Right. Because it's very low in fat, very delicious. Miss Jenny, tell us about what you've eaten thus far. Okay. Well, fortunately for me, I got an opportunity to tip. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm helping Keisha, assisting her, but I really enjoyed it, um, especially the caramel. Oh, it's so delicious. And I like the fact that you have the crumbled graham crackers going here. It's an awesome dish, light, fluffy. And as you say, you don't feel guilty when you eat it. It's, it's for real pleasure, comfort food, because I'm comfortable knowing that it's good and comfortable knowing that it's heavy. So oh, my God. It's healthy, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad about it. I like Oh my God. What do you have to say about this? Talk to me, please. Oh my God. This is a petite banana foster. In a a glass. petite banana foster in a glass. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Oh my God. This hood chick. What are you eating right now? Tell us about your dish that you're eating right now, please. I don't mean to stop you, but just stand up right quick. Talk to the audience. She doesn't want to be bothered. She wants to eat. <laughs> Tell us about your experience right now with these dishes. I am enjoying all of it. Um, I haven't got to the dessert yet because I don't want to mess up my appetite for the food. So far, so good. I'm enjoying the, the chicken, the uh, the, bro the black rice, and the corn. The corn. I need something to go. Oh my God. <laughs> it's awesome because I'm a corn eater, but tonight's experience has been actually brilliant and exciting. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you. Thank you for that. Don, did you eat anything yet? Of course, I ate the black rice. It was so good, so like fluffy, the texture, the taste, then it had like a hint of the seasoning that you use. It was delicious. Oh my God. And then putting it with the cream corn, it was like a meal of tea. That was it. You're gonna have to share that to go. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's my house. There is no to go. <laughs> it's for home. <laughs> you get it? It's for home. My God, daughter, tell us about what you like so far. You didn't eat anything. You're not acting like my goddaughter. You're supposed to always eat. <laughs> Come on, Angela. Tell me what about this. Oh, my God. This is too much. All right, well, I'm finished with everything, and it was delicious. You know, the dessert is good, and to know it's just like 100 calories per serving. Like the pastor kind of said, you can't eat at least two or three, but you got to learn to eat them slow. Oh my God. You You're checking long. me, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm talking about myself. You're checking me. I'm checking you, know. you right now. I'm talking okay. about myself right now. Oh my God. So let's go over here and check with Sister Tosha. She's been in and out. Now we get a chance to hear from every <laughs> dish that she's had thus far. And she's knocked out this black rice. Oh my God. Talk to us, Tosha. Tell us about it. This black rice is awesome. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Knowledge you don't get in college. I was eating white rice. Oh my God. This is, I love, one thing about cooking is I love exposing my church family to different tastes, different food, different places. It's a blessing to be able to part with each other, break bread together, because there's so many great meals God has on this earth, so many exotic foods, so many wonderful foods, and we're going to bring them each and every last one of them to you on this OTC cooking show. Keisha, let me get this last dessert. What kind of dessert is this last dessert? Because now, I'm ready to eat this. caramel banana. Caramel banana. So let's call this our, we're going to mention two great women, two great, we're going to add two great women together. We talked about Rosa Parks, right? Right. We'll talk about Harriet Tugman, right? right? So let's add, let's honor tonight two of the greatest women in the history of women. How about Harriet Tugman? And how about 
Madam C.J. Walker. Does that sound good? Yeah. Madam C.J. Walker. I love Madam C.J. Walker. She has contributed to all these bangs and bundles that we see <laughs> here tonight. Without Madam C.J. Walker, our church would not have the swag that it has. So Madam C.J. Walker, we dedicate this dessert to you, the half with the banana in it. And then, of course, what can I say about my lady? Oh my God, what can I say about the queens of this world like Ida B. Wells when she was fighting for justice and fighting against lynching uh, in Mississippi and even in Memphis, Tennessee. She said, hey, there's no justice in Memphis. She told the people to go up north and many other people in Chicago today and up north in these northern cities left Memphis because of the calling of Ida B. Wells when she said there is no justice. But we have brought justice through Memphis, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, and also through Old Taste and Sea Cooking Show. This is a justice dessert. It's just for us that are here tonight enjoying this black history celebration, this black history meal. I am so thankful to be a part. But Keisha, let me taste it because I know how the one with the chocolate tastes. Oh, my God. So let's see how this is delicious. You've tasted it already. How, how'd you beat me tasting in my own kitchen? Mm, mm, mm. Oh my God. Now listen, I've already been to the gym. So now all I have to do tonight is just study for this fresh word that's coming on Sunday. But you can leave these out on the table instead of the refrigerator because <laughs> during my study break, I will be back, God willing, to this kitchen. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. And all these people yelling for us to go plate. We only have real plates in the kind of household, okay? <laughs> and these plates have to stay here. So let me take this. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my God. You all, let's pray and bless this food with our TV audience. Lord, we thank you for the food that we've eaten. We thank you for the audience that have been a part of this talk show. We thank you for not only the saints that we mentioned that we celebrated through the Black History um, talk tonight, but those that we did not mention that Thank have contributed you. to the success of black people, white people, brown people, yellow people, everywhere. We thank you, God, for making our leaders. We thank you, Lord, for allowing their lives to have existed because without them and you calling and using them, we wouldn't be here today being able to go to any grocery store to celebrate and buy whatever we want. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the wealth in the mind to get wealth. Thank you for blessing our audience. Thank you for blessing this house, yes, our yes. church family, and those that are yet to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.